Okay, so what we're going to look at now is section 9.4, day one. This begins on page 575. And this is vectors, the algebraic approach. So these are the same vectors that we talked about with the geometric approach. The difference here, let me slide this down. The difference here is that we're just going to approach the math from the algebra side rather than from the geometry side. Basically, everything in math has a geometric side to it and an algebraic side to it. Okay, there's a way to understand it geometrically. There's a way to understand it algebraically with equations and direct numbers and things like that instead of shapes. Okay, and that actually goes back to the history of mathematics where you had, for thousands of years, people that were either geometers or algebraists, and both of them thought that they were the only ones who knew how the universe actually worked, and the other ones were crazy. And it wasn't until thousands of years later that mathematicians realized that algebra and geometry are permanently interconnected. You don't have one without the other. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start by talking about the component form of a vector. This is a new kind of notation is all it is. So if I have a vector, let's go back to looking at it geometrically because that's what you're used to at this point. Okay, shrink this down. All right. So I have a vector, and let's say that vector goes from here to there. So it's going from this point, which is negative 7, 1, to this point, which is negative 1, 3. So negative 7, 1 to negative 1, comma 3. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, from the initial point to the terminal point, how far did the vector move in the x direction and which way? How far did it move in the y direction and which way? So as we go from the initial point to the terminal point, you can see that this vector in the x direction moves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the right. So it went 6 units to the right, which is positive 6. And then it went up two units, which is positive two. Right and up are positive. Down and left are negative, as you would expect. So we can actually write the component form as this vec of this vector as 6, comma 2. I'll call this vector v. So vector v is equal to 6, comma 2. Now, we do not want to use parentheses, because if we use parentheses, we're indicating that that's a point, not a vector. So the way we indicate that these are the components, the x and y components of a vector, is we use a different notation. We use angled brackets instead of parentheses. So this says that the x component, remember in the last section we were using the magnitude times cosine for the x component and the magnitude times sine for the y component from the last homework assignment? This is giving us those components right in the definition of the vector. 6 comma 2 tells us our x component is 6 to the right and our y component is 2 up. This is the notation that we use in the algebraic approach. So if I have a vector that looks like this, going from here to here, so this is 9 comma negative 4, and it's going to 4 comma 3, then I'll call this vector r. Vector r then is equal to, notice we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, so that's negative 5, and we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so the vector component form would be negative 5 comma 7. Nice and easy. Now, the way that you get these answers from the coordinates 
is when you have your initial point and your terminal point, I'll call the initial point x1, y1, and I'll call the terminal point x2, y2. The vector, let's say it has some components a comma b, it turns out that this ends up being x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. It's where you end up minus you, where you started in the x direction, comma, where you end up minus where you started in the y direction. So this is vector component form. Very easy to find, very easy to work with. It's also really nice because we don't need to actually draw the vectors to see what's going on, and we don't need to draw the vectors in order to find the magnitude. There is no need to make this thing into a right triangle because notice, guys, that the sides of the right triangle, the 6 and the 2, are built right into the components. So when we go to find the magnitude of a vector, so if I want to find the magnitude of the vector 6, 2, I know that the magnitude squared, that's my c squared, is equal to a squared plus b squared which means that the magnitude is the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared. So in general, when you have a vector with components a comma b, the magnitude of that vector is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And use parentheses so that negatives don't throw you off, because when you square them, negatives become positives. But if you don't use parentheses, you may forget to square the negative, and you may still have a negative floating around in there. So this ends up giving you the square root of 36 plus 4, which is the square root of 40, which is 2 square root of 10. The magnitude of our other vector, r, negative 5 comma 7, is equal to the square root of negative 5 quantity squared plus 7 quantity squared. That's the square root of 25 plus 49. So square root of 74, which doesn't simplify. Now, obviously, if they want a decimal, you can punch these into your calculator. But if they don't ask you for one or there aren't decimals in the original, then I would just leave it in radical form. And I will typically make that clear on the quiz and the test if I want you to leave magnitudes in radical form or if I want nearest tenth or something. Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're now going to talk about how to manipulate vectors algebraically, how to do the addition and subtraction. Um, so if I have two vectors, let's say I have a vector u, which has component form 3, negative 7, and I have vector v, which has component form 5, 9, and I want to find u plus v. Well, with the geometric method, I would have had to draw the vectors. I would have had to move them around so that they were tip to tail. I would have had to draw the resultant, and then to find the magnitude and direction, I would have then had to draw the right, make the right triangle out of it, and do the Pythagorean theorem and do the inverse tangent. To add vectors together algebraically, what I'm doing is I'm taking their vector components. So I have u plus v. And guess how this works? This becomes the x components added together, comma, the y components added together. And so the resultant vector is going to have components 8, 2. And so to see that graphically, geometrically, let me show you what these vectors are looking like. So if I start, let's say I start with vector u. Remember, they're portable, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to start at 0, 0. And this vector is going to go. 3 in the x direction and 7 in the negative y direction, so it's going to go to there. 
and then doing tip to tail, my V is going to start here, and it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the x direction, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in the y direction. So if I walk along this path and then change direction and walk along this path, my resultant would go from where I started to where I end up. Notice that the x component is 8 to the right and 2 up, which would be 8 comma 2. But we don't have to do any of that drawing. All we have to do is add the x components together and add the y components. So the general rule is that if you have some vector x1 comma y1 plus some vector x2 comma y2 in component form, then you have x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2. Now, can we subtract vectors the same way? Absolutely. So if we want, we could do vector u minus vector v. That's going to be 3 comma negative 7 minus 5 comma 9. That's going to be 3 minus 5 comma negative 7 minus 9, which would be negative 2, negative 16. What is the Excuse me, what is the geometric interpretation of subtraction of vectors? What it is, is you're really doing vector u plus negative vector v. In other words, you're taking vector u and you're attaching vector v to it, but you're reversing the direction of v. You're flipping which way v points. So what we would be doing here is we would take vector u, which goes like this, and then we would take vector v, except that instead of it pointing in this direction, vector v would point in this direction. And so to make it tip to tail, we would have to grab it and slide it down here. And so our resultant is going to go down this way, 2 to the left, and it goes off my graph, but 16 down. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Now, what I want to talk about next briefly, and we're just about done, I do want to talk about vector multiplication. We've talked about adding and subtracting. There's also vector multiplication. And there are three types. There's scalar multiplication, which is what we're going to talk about right now. There is also what we call the dot product which we'll talk about on the next lesson. And there's also something called the cross product, which we don't really deal with in this book. It's something that you do absolutely deal with when you guys are working in physics. <clears throat> so we're only going to focus on scalar multiplication right now. So if I have some vector v, and let's say it is negative 4, 11. A scalar is a number that you multiply times a vector. So I can do things like two vector v's. That's equal to 2 times the components, negative 4, 11. And again, the algebraic approach is really nice. It works exactly the way you'd expect. You distribute the scalar. This is our scalar. It scales the vector by 2. You distribute that in, and you get negative 8, comma 22. And without drawing it or anything else, we immediately get our resultant vector. Now, how do we find the magnitude of that? The magnitude of this would again be the square root of a squared plus b squared equals, I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot. You guys get the idea. We've already talked about that. OK. We can also do things now like this. Let's say we have vector u, which is equal to 1, 2. And we have vector v, which is equal to negative 3, 4. 
Sorry, that should have brackets. Do not slip up, guys, and use parentheses instead of brackets. It doesn't mean the same thing. For vector components, it must be brackets. And you will see there's one problem. I don't remember off the top of my head which one it is on the homework, either today's or tomorrow's, where they give you a point, but they use one of the angled brackets on one end instead of a parentheses. And, or it may have been the other way around. Maybe they give you components, but they use a parentheses instead of a bracket on just one end. It's, it's an obvious typo. You'll notice it when you get to it. You'll know what they meant to put in. So just watch out for that. We can do things like 2u minus 3v. So I would do the 2u first. That's 2 times 1 comma 2, which is equal to 2 comma 4. I would do the 3v next. 3v is equal to 3 times negative 3, 4, which is negative 9, 12. And then I would do u, sorry, 2u minus 3v. 2 minus negative 9 is 11. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. There we go. Now, We've talked about magnitude. We've talked about adding and subtracting and scalar multiplication. What we haven't talked about with the algebraic approach to vectors is how you find the direction of the vector. So let's do that real quick, and we'll call it quits for this lesson. If I have a vector, <coughs> vector v, <coughs> excuse me, which has components 4, 5. So that's a vector, if we were to look at it geometrically, it starts anywhere and goes 4 and 5, like that. Well, notice, guys, what this gives you is this gives you an automatic right triangle where this is 4 and this is 5. This is your 90 degree angle. We can find the magnitude of v by doing our square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 25, which is the square root of 41. So this is rad 41. We care about the direction of the vector, which is theta, which is right there, measured from the positive x-axis always. If you're not measuring it counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, then you have to use north, south, east, west directions. There's no point in introducing that to a problem just for the sake of introducing it. You're better off using it in standard position so you can just list the angle. And you don't have to worry about north, south, east, west. We're going to do the direction the same way we did it with the geometric method, and that is that tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So theta equals inverse tangent of 5 over 4. So theta is about equal to, make sure I'm set to degrees, which I am, inverse tangent, parentheses, 5 divided by 4, 51.3 degrees. There's your direction. So that works the same way as a geometric method. What I want to show you, though, is the general form of it. So if you have some vector, some generic vector v with components a, comma b, this is a, this is b, theta is going to be inverse tangent of b, this guy, over a, this guy. So we know that theta is going to be inverse tangent of 5 over 4, which is what we saw right here. So you can jump right into it. You don't have to draw the picture. And again, that's the beauty of the algebraic method is you don't ever have to draw the picture of these things. All right, so that's the lesson for today. One other thing I will mention is that if you have vectors that are being added and or subtracted, and or with scalar multiplication, it works exactly the way you'd expect. You would combine all the x components and you would combine all the y components according to adding and subtracting and the multiplying. 
works exactly the way you expect. It's nice and easy, very clean. Okay, that's it for today's lesson.